Megan gazed out the window of her small suburban home, watching the last traces of daylight fade into the purple hues of dusk. The neighborhood was quiet, unusually so, as the hum of life outside dwindled to nothing. Her parents had gone out of town for the weekend, leaving her alone for the first time. The house felt too big, too empty, and far too silent. She pulled her sweater tighter around her as she moved through the house, flipping on lights in every room. The familiarity of the space did little to comfort her. Something felt off, though she couldn't quite place what it was. The shadows seemed longer, darker, the creaks of the house more pronounced. Every noise made her jump, her heart beating a little faster each time. Megan decided to distract herself with a movie. Something funny, she thought, to chase away the nerves. As she settled onto the couch, she heard a faint noise, a tapping sound, like fingernails drumming against glass. She muted the television and listened. The tapping came again, more insistent this time. It was coming from the living room window. Cautiously, she approached the window, her heart in her throat. She expected to see something, someone, on the other side, but there was nothing. Just the dark outline of the trees against the night sky. She exhaled a shaky breath, convincing herself it was just a branch blown by the wind. Megan returned to the couch, but she couldn't shake the unease that clung to her. The tapping noise started again, this time from the kitchen. Her pulse quickened as she tiptoed toward the kitchen door. Again, there was nothing there, just the same empty darkness outside. She locked the door, double-checking the latch before backing away. The house was playing tricks on her, she decided. It was just her imagination running wild because she was alone, alone in the house. The thought sent a shiver down her spine. The night dragged on, each minute feeling like an eternity. Megan tried to focus on her movie, but her mind kept drifting back to the strange noises. The tapping continued, now coming from different parts of the house, first the window, then the back door, and even from upstairs. It was as if someone or something was trying to get in. The final straw came when she heard a loud crash from the basement. It echoed through the house, making her jump to her feet. Panic surged through her. She grabbed the first thing she could find, a fireplace poker, and slowly made her way to the basement door. Megan hesitated at the top of the stairs. The darkness below seemed to swallow the weak light from the hallway. She steeled herself and flicked on the basement light. It flickered before illuminating the stairs and the cluttered space below. Taking a deep breath, she descended the stairs, her footsteps barely making a sound on the wooden steps. The basement was cluttered with old furniture, boxes, and other forgotten items. Her eyes scanned the room, searching for the source of the noise. Nothing appeared out of place until she saw the broken mirror on the far wall. It had fallen from its hook, shards of glass scattered across the floor. She knelt to pick up the pieces, the silence around her becoming oppressive. A cold draft swept through the basement, making her shiver. Megan looked around, trying to find the source of the breeze. That's when she noticed it, a small, nearly imperceptible crack in the far corner of the room, just wide enough for a person to slip through. Her heart raced as she moved closer. The poker clenched tightly in her hand. The crack led into a narrow passageway, one she had never noticed before. It was pitch dark inside, the kind of darkness that seemed to absorb the light. Megan hesitated, every instinct telling her to turn back to get out of the house and call someone, but something compelled her forward. Curiosity. Or maybe it was the need to know what was hiding in her home. She squeezed through the gap and stepped into the passageway. The air inside was musty, damp, and it smelled faintly of something rotten. She gagged as she moved deeper into the passage, the light from her phone barely piercing the darkness. The narrow space seemed to stretch on forever, leading her farther and farther from the safety of the house. Just as she was about to turn back, she saw it, a door at the end of the passage. It was old the wood rotting and splintered, but the handle gleamed as if it had been polished recently. Megan reached out, her hand trembling as she grasped the cold metal. She turned the handle slowly, the door creaking open to reveal a small room. The smell hit her first, strong, metallic, and unmistakable. Blood. The walls were lined with photographs, dozens of them, all of her. Megan felt a wave of nausea wash over her as she recognized her own face staring back at her from the pictures. 
There were photos of her at school, in the yard, sleeping in her bed. Whoever had taken them had been watching her for a long time. In the center of the room was a single chair, and on it, a doll that looked eerily similar to her, down to the clothes she was wearing that night. The doll's eyes were stitched shut, and a crude smile had been carved into its face. Megan backed away, her breath coming in short, panicked gasps. That's when she heard it, the soft, almost imperceptible sound of breathing behind her. She spun around, raising the poker, but it was too late. A hand clamped over her mouth, and she felt a sharp pain as something cold and hard pressed against her side. Shh! A voice whispered in her ear, the sound sending a chill down her spine. We don't want to wake the others. Terror paralyzed her as she was pulled backward, deeper into the darkness. The last thing she saw before the light from her phone was extinguished was the door closing behind her, sealing her fate. Days later, the police would search the house, called by concerned neighbors who hadn't seen Megan in days. They would find the house undisturbed, everything in its place, except for the broken mirror in the basement. They would never find the passageway, the room, or the twisted shrine within. Megan would simply vanish, her disappearance remaining one of the many unsolved mysteries that haunt the town to this day. Story number two. It was an old house. Too old, some would say with wooden beams that groaned under the weight of years and windows that rattled even when the wind was still. Lily had always been wary of it, but after her grandmother passed away, the house was left to her. She was determined to make it her own, despite the eerie reputation that clung to it like a shadow. Lily moved in on a chilly Friday evening. She lugged her suitcases through the creaking front door, the hinges screaming in protest. Dust danced in the slivers of fading sunlight as she set down her bags and took in her new home. The air was thick, almost suffocating, and the silence was so profound it felt alive. Her first night was uneventful, but strange little noises echoed through the halls. Soft creaks, distant whispers that she chalked up to her nerves. The next day, she busied herself unpacking, trying to ignore the odd feeling that she was being watched. The house was still and cold and yet she couldn't shake the sensation of unseen eyes. By evening, rain began to tap against the windows. Lily curled up on the couch with a book, trying to relax. As she turned the pages, she heard it again, the faint sound of whispering, barely audible above the storm. She glanced around, but the room was empty. Her heart quickened as the whispers grew louder, almost rhythmic, and like a chant. It seemed to be coming from the walls themselves. Lily set her book down, listening closely. She followed the sound to the hallway where the whispers faded into silence. She pressed her ear against the wall, holding her breath. For a moment, there was nothing. Then, just as she was about to pull away, she heard it clearly, a hushed voice speaking directly into her ear. Help me. Lily staggered back, her pulse racing. The voice was faint but unmistakable, pleading and desperate. She ran her hands along the wall, searching for a hidden speaker, a draft, anything that could explain what she'd just heard. But there was nothing, just cold, unyielding plaster. She shook her head, telling herself it was her imagination, the old house playing tricks on her. But deep down, she knew that wasn't true. That night, Lily lay in bed, wide awake. The whispering returned, drifting through the walls like a sickly breeze. She buried her head under the pillow, but the voices seeped in, filling her ears with disjointed pleas and unintelligible murmurs. Every word felt like a needle prick against her sanity. By the third night, the whispers had become constant. She could barely sleep, the voices keeping her on the edge of panic. They spoke of things that made no sense, of shadows moving in the dark, of doors that should never be opened. And always that same desperate plea, help me. Lily couldn't take it anymore. She called a contractor to check for faulty wiring or hidden devices. The man was thorough, inspecting every inch of the house. He found nothing unusual, no speakers, no faulty wires, no explanation for the voices. Old houses make noise, he said, shrugging. But Lily knew it was more than that. She was certain the whispers were not just in her head. That evening, Lily decided to confront the voices. She sat in the living room, the house dark around her, and spoke aloud. What do you want? She asked, her voice trembling. For a long moment, there was silence. Then from the walls came a response, clear and sharp as broken glass. Let me out. The words sent a chill down her spine. 
the walls seemed to pulse, breathing with a life of their own. Lily's eyes darted around the room, her mind racing. She remembered her grandmother's warnings, how she'd always told her to stay out of the basement. Lily had never questioned why. Driven by a mix of fear and morbid curiosity, Lily grabbed a flashlight and headed for the basement door. It was stiff, as if it hadn't been opened in years. She forced it open, and a foul, musty odor wafted up, making her gag. The stairs creaked under her weight as she descended into the darkness. The basement was cold and damp, filled with old furniture and forgotten relics. As Lily swung the beam of the flashlight around, she noticed something strange. A section of the wall that looked different, newer than the rest. Her heart pounded as she approached it, the whispers growing louder, more urgent. With trembling hands, she touched the wall. It was colder than ice. She noticed the faint outline of a door, hastily plastered over and painted to match the surrounding wall. Lily's breath hitched as she realized what she was looking at. Someone had been sealed inside. She grabbed a crowbar from a nearby shelf and began prying at the wall, chipping away the plaster. Each swing was fueled by dread and adrenaline. As the plaster crumbled, a small iron door was revealed. The whispers were now deafening, pleading and angry. Lily hesitated, her mind screaming at her to stop, but she couldn't. She unlocked the rusty latch and pulled the door open. The stench of decay hit her like a wave, and she staggered back, coughing. Inside was a small, lie-cramped space, just big enough to hold a person. And there, curled up in the corner, was a skeleton, its bones twisted in a final, agonized pose. The whispering stopped. The house fell silent, and Lily felt a rush of cold air pass through her, as if something had been released. She stumbled backward, horrified by what she had uncovered. The realization sank in. Her grandmother hadn't been protecting her from the basement. She had been protecting whatever was trapped inside. As Lily backed away, she heard one last whisper, softer than before, but unmistakably real. It echoed through the empty house, a parting gift from whatever she had set free. Thank you. Lily fled the house that night, never to return. She sold it to the first buyer who didn't ask too many questions, but the whispers never left her. They followed her a constant reminder of the secrets hidden behind walls and the horrors that lurk just out of sight, waiting for someone foolish enough to set them free. Story number three. After her grandmother passed away, Sarah inherited the family's old countryside home. It had been years since she last visited the house, a place steeped in memories of childhood summers and warm kitchen scents. But now it stood empty, isolated, and cloaked in an air of abandonment. Arriving at dusk, Sarah parked her car in the overgrown driveway, the trees casting long, eerie shadows across the yard. The house loomed before her, its once white paint now chipped and peeling, windows darkened like hollow eyes. As she unlocked the front door, a faint sense of unease tugged at her. Nothing she could quite put her finger on, just a feeling that something wasn't right. She shook off the sensation and stepped inside. The house smelled of dust and disuse, the air thick and stale. Her footsteps echoed through the empty rooms as she moved from the foyer to the kitchen, turning on lights as she went. Everything was as she remembered, though it felt colder now, less welcoming. The last room she checked was the living room, where the attic door hung from the ceiling, the pull-down ladder firmly secured. The attic had always been a place of mystery for her as a child, filled with forgotten treasures and hidden corners. But tonight, it seemed ominous, almost forbidding. Sarah turned away and focused on unpacking. She planned to stay for the weekend, long enough to sort through her grandmother's belongings and decide what to keep. The first night passed uneventfully, though she couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. It was as if the house itself was alive, its creaks and groans carrying a disquieting presence. In the early hours of the morning, she was jolted awake by a loud thump overhead. Her heart raced as she sat up, straining to listen. Another thump followed, then silence. It was coming from the attic. She tried to calm herself, telling herself it was just the house settling or perhaps a raccoon that had found its way inside. But the sound had been too deliberate, too heavy. Grabbing her phone as a flashlight, she climbed out of bed and crept down the hallway. The house was still, unnervingly so, as she approached the attic door. She hesitated, hand on the pull cord, before giving it a firm tug. The ladder, 
unfolded with a groan and a blast of cold air rushed down from the attic. Swallowing her fear, Sarah climbed the steps slowly, the wooden boards creaking under her weight. As her head breached the opening, she swept the light across the attic. It was cluttered with old furniture, boxes, and dusty antiques. Everything was covered in a thick layer of dust, untouched for years, except for a small area near the far wall where the dust had been disturbed. She stepped into the attic, the cold seeping into her bones. Her breath clouded in the frigid air as she approached the spot. There, among the dust, were footprints. Small, bare footprints that led to the far corner, where an old, tattered sheet covered something large. Sarah's pulse quickened as she reached for the sheet. She hesitated, then yanked it off in one swift motion. Beneath it was a large, ornate mirror, its surface cracked and clouded with age. But something about it was wrong. The reflection it cast wasn't quite right, it seemed deeper, almost as if the mirror was a window into another room. She stepped closer, her reflection distorted in the cracked glass. As she stared, she noticed movement behind her, a shadowy figure standing just at the edge of the mirror's frame. Sarah spun around, but the attic was empty. Her heart hammered in her chest as she turned back to the mirror. The figure was gone, but the unease remained. She backed away, her breath coming in shallow gasps. Something was in the attic with her, something she couldn't see. Suddenly, the ladder slammed shut behind her with a loud bang. Sarah yelped, dropping her phone, the light flickering as it hit the floor and rolled away. She was plunged into darkness, the only light now coming from the faint glow of the moon through the attic window. Panicking, she scrambled for the phone, but the attic floor seemed to stretch out before her, the shadows lengthening, warping. She could hear it now, a faint scratching sound like nails on wood coming from the far corner of the attic. She turned the phone's light toward the sound, and there it was, the figure, emerging from the shadows. It was tall, impossibly thin, with limbs that bent in unnatural angles. Its face was obscured, hidden in the darkness, but its eyes, those eyes gleamed in the faint light, staring directly at her. Frozen in terror, Sarah could only watch as the figure moved closer, its steps slow and deliberate. The scratching grew louder, more frantic as it neared. She tried to scream, but no sound came out. Her legs felt like lead, refusing to move. Just as the figure reached out toward her, the phone's light flickered and died, plunging her into total darkness. When the light returned, Sarah found herself standing in the middle of the living room, the morning sun streaming through the windows. The attic door was closed, the ladder tucked neatly away. She was holding the phone, its screen cracked but still functional. Confused and disoriented, she glanced around the room. Everything seemed normal, but she could still feel the icy grip of fear in her chest. Had it been a nightmare? A hallucination? As she stood there, trying to make sense of it all, something caught her eye. A faint movement reflected in the large, antique mirror that hung on the living room wall. It was just a shadow, but it was enough to send a chill down her spine. With trembling hands, Sarah grabbed her keys and fled the house, leaving everything behind. She never returned. The old countryside home stood empty once more, its walls whispering in the silence. And in the attic, the mirror waited, its surface cracked, its reflection not quite right, like a window into another place, another world, where something was always watching. Story number four. Elena moved into the old Victorian house on the edge of town with a sense of excitement. It was her first real taste of independence, a sprawling, creaky place with more rooms than she knew what to do with. The rent was cheap, which made her a bit suspicious, but the landlady had assured her that the previous tenants had simply moved out of state. She didn't ask too many questions. She wanted the space and the solitude to focus on her art. On the first night, the house was eerily silent. The only sounds were the wind howling through the trees and the occasional creak of the floorboards. Elena busied herself unpacking, ignoring the unsettling atmosphere that seemed to hang in the air. By the time she settled into bed, she had convinced herself that the house was just old and nothing more. But then she heard it, a faint whisper, almost inaudible, coming from the walls. Elena sat up, her heart pounding. She strained to listen, but the sound had stopped. Shaking her head, she dismissed it as her imagination running wild. After all, she was alone in a large, unfamiliar house. The next day, she explored the house more thoroughly. 
It was filled with dusty furniture, antique mirrors, and faded portraits of long-dead residents. The basement door was locked, and she couldn't find the key. She didn't mind. The idea of going down there alone was unsettling. As she settled into her new routine, the whispers continued. Sometimes they were so faint that she thought she was imagining them, but other times they were unmistakable. Words she couldn't quite make out, as though someone was speaking just on the other side of the wall. Elena started to notice other odd things, a cold draft in certain rooms, the smell of something rotten that seemed to come and go, and objects that weren't where she remembered leaving them. She chalked it up to the quirks of an old house, but the growing sense of unease was hard to ignore. One evening, she was painting in the living room when she heard a loud thump from upstairs. She froze, brush in hand. The noise came again, louder this time, as if something heavy had fallen. Gathering her courage, Elena grabbed a flashlight and slowly climbed the stairs. The noise had come from the room at the end of the hall, a room she hadn't yet ventured into. The door was slightly ajar, and she hesitated before pushing it open. Inside, the room was dark, with only the dim light from the hallway spilling in. The air was thick with dust, and the room was filled with old, forgotten furniture. But nothing appeared out of place. As she turned to leave, the flashlight beam caught something on the floor, a small, dusty key. Elena's heart skipped a beat. It looked like the key to the basement door. She picked it up, a sense of dread settling in her stomach. Something told her not to go down there, but curiosity got the better of her. She made her way to the basement door, inserted the key, and turned it. The lock clicked, and the door creaked open. A damp, musty smell wafted up from the darkness below. The steps groaned under her weight as she descended, the flashlight barely cutting through the thick darkness. The basement was cluttered with old furniture, boxes, and cobwebs. As she explored, the whispers returned, louder now, echoing off the walls. She couldn't tell where they were coming from, but they seemed to be all around her. Elena's hands trembled as she swept the beam of the flashlight across the room. It landed on something that made her blood run cold. A large, old-fashioned chest in the corner, partially covered by a tattered sheet. The whispers intensified as she approached the chest, her heart racing. The air grew colder, and she could feel eyes watching her. She hesitated, but something compelled her to lift the lid. Inside, she found nothing but dust and decayed fabric. Relief washed over her, but it was short-lived. As she turned to leave, the door at the top of the stairs slammed shut with a deafening bang. Elena screamed, dropping the flashlight. It rolled across the floor, casting wild shadows on the walls. She ran to the stairs, but the door wouldn't budge. Panic set in as she pounded on the door, shouting for help, but her voice was swallowed by the darkness. The whispers grew louder, more insistent. They were inside her head now, filling her with a terror she couldn't escape. She backed away from the door, her breath coming in ragged gasps. Then, out of the corner of her eye, she saw something move. A shadow, darker than the rest, creeping along the wall. It wasn't alone. Shapes emerged from the darkness, figures that twisted and writhed as they approached. They were the source of the whispers, their voices mingling into a cacophony of madness. Elena's legs gave out, and she collapsed onto the cold, hard floor. The figures loomed over her, their faces hidden in shadow, their whispers now deafening. In a final moment of clarity, Elena realized the truth. The house wasn't empty. It had never been. The previous tenants hadn't moved out. They had never left. And now, neither would she. As the darkness closed in, the whispers grew soft, like a lullaby. Elena's vision blurred, her body growing numb. The last thing she saw was the door at the top of the stairs creaking open, but it wasn't escape that, that awaited her. It was a new beginning. In the stillness of the night, the house stood silent once more. From the walls, a faint whisper could be heard, barely audible, almost like the wind. Story number five. The rain poured relentlessly, turning the narrow streets into rivers as Emma pulled into the driveway of her new home. It was supposed to be a fresh start, away from the chaos of city life. The house was old, nestled in a quiet neighborhood, with overgrown trees that seemed to whisper secrets in the wind. Emma stepped inside, dripping wet, and flipped on the lights. The dim glow illuminated a quaint living room filled with antique furniture left behind by the previous owner. Emma spent the evening unpacking, trying to ignore the eerie stillness that clung to the house. 
she reassured herself that the unsettling atmosphere was just the typical awkwardness of being alone in a new place. As the night wore on, the rain intensified, beating against the windows like an impatient knock. The power flickered briefly, but the lights stayed on. Emma curled up on the couch, exhausted, and drifted off to sleep. A loud bang jolted her awake. She sat up, heart racing, and looked around. The room was dark, the only light coming from the dim glow of her phone on the coffee table. She fumbled to turn on the lamp, but it didn't work. Power outage, she thought, shaking her head. She checked her phone, 2.47 a.m. Another loud thud echoed through the house, coming from somewhere upstairs. Emma grabbed her flashlight and crept toward the staircase. The wooden steps groaned under her weight as she ascended, each creak amplified by the silence. She stopped at the top, listening intently. The sound seemed to come from the guest bedroom at the end of the hall. Her hands trembled as she pushed the door open, the beam of the flashlight cutting through the darkness. The room was empty, just as she had left it, except for an old wardrobe that stood in the corner, a relic of the house's past. Emma frowned, certain she'd heard something. She approached the wardrobe cautiously, the air around it feeling colder. She hesitated, then pulled the doors open. Empty. Emma let out a shaky breath, feeling foolish. It's just an old house, she told herself. Old houses make noise. She shut the wardrobe and turned to leave, but as she did, she caught a glimpse of something in the mirror on the wall, a shadowy figure standing right behind her. Emma spun around, but the room was empty. She whipped the flashlight back to the mirror, but the figure was gone. Her heart pounded as she stared at her own reflection, trying to rationalize what she'd seen. It must have been a trick of the light, a play of shadows. But deep down, she knew it wasn't. The next day, Emma tried to shake off the eerie encounter. She spent the afternoon running errands, hoping a busy day would clear her mind. By the time she returned, the rain had stopped and the sun was setting behind the trees, casting long, ominous shadows. As she walked into the house, she noticed something odd. The guest bedroom door was slightly ajar. Emma was certain she had closed it. She cautiously stepped inside. The wardrobe loomed in the corner, and for a moment, she considered moving it out of the room entirely. But the thought of dragging the heavy piece of furniture downstairs was daunting. As she turned to leave, she heard a faint creaking behind her. She stopped, listening. The wardrobe door, which she knew she had shut, was now slightly open. Emma's nerves were frayed. She grabbed a chair from the kitchen and wedged it under the wardrobe's handle, jamming the door shut. There, she thought, that should keep it closed. But that night, as she lay in bed, she heard it again, a soft creak, like the sound of a door slowly opening. Emma squeezed her eyes shut, pulling the covers over her head, trying to drown out the noise. But the creaking continued, followed by the unmistakable sound of footsteps. She bolted upright, breathing heavily. The house was pitch dark and the footsteps echoed down the hall, slow and deliberate. Emma grabbed her flashlight, her hands shaking as she swung the beam toward the doorway. She thought she saw movement, a flicker of a shadow. Gathering all her courage, she stepped into the hallway, her flashlight illuminating the path ahead. The footsteps had stopped, but the air was heavy, thick with an unseen presence. Emma inched toward the guest bedroom, her skin crawling with dread. The door was wide open now, the chair she'd wedged under the wardrobe lying on the floor. Emma stepped inside, her flashlight trembling as she shined it on the wardrobe. The doors were fully open, revealing nothing but darkness inside. She turned away, panic rising when she heard a whisper, soft, almost playful. Welcome back. Emma whirled around, her flashlight sweeping the room. There was no one there, but the feeling of being watched was overwhelming. She backed out of the room, slamming the door shut and locking it. She spent the rest of the night huddled on the couch, wide awake, listening to the silence. The next morning, Emma called a locksmith and had the wardrobe moved to the garage. She wanted it out of the house, out of sight. But even after it was gone, the feeling of unease lingered. She couldn't shake the sense that she was not alone. That night, Emma lay in bed, finally beginning to relax. The house was quiet, almost peaceful. She closed her eyes, willing herself to sleep. But just as she was drifting off, she heard a familiar sound, the soft creak of a door opening. Emma's eyes snapped open. She turned on her side and froze. 
There at the foot of her bed stood the wardrobe, its doors slightly ajar. She stared in disbelief, her mind reeling. How could it be back? She had seen it taken away. As she sat up, heart pounding, the wardrobe doors creaked open wider, revealing nothing but darkness. Emma's breath hitched as a figure slowly emerged, a pale, shadowy outline that seemed to ripple and fade with each step. It moved toward her, silent and relentless. Emma screamed, scrambling backward, but the figure was already beside her, whispering in a cold, familiar voice. I never left. The next day, when her friend came to check on her after unanswered calls, Emma was gone. The house was empty, except for the wardrobe, still standing at the foot of the bed, its doors slightly ajar. Inside, there was nothing but darkness and the faint scent of rain. 